Are you struggling to solve dynamic programming problems? You're not alone. In fact, there are countless others in your position too. The thing is, the age-old wisdom of developing your intuition or practicing more is easier said than done. So how does one get better at dynamic programming? Well, in my experience, most people who struggle with dynamic programming can't actually define what it is. What I mean is when to use it and why. How can you accurately tell when a problem can benefit from dynamic programming? That's why in this video, I want to bring it back to basics. We're going to look at what dynamic programming is and how to accurately and consistently tell when to use it for a problem. This video will be the first in a short series. So if you find it useful, subscribe to stay tuned for more. So with that out of the way, let's jump into it. Dynamic programming is an algorithmic optimization technique that breaks down a complicated problem into smaller overlapping subproblems in a recursive manner and uses solutions to the subproblems to construct a solution to the original problem. Now, I know this might sound complex at first, but to get a better understanding, let's dive into the origin of the phrase dynamic programming and what makes it dynamic. The term was coined by mathematician Richard Bellman in the 1950s. The term doesn't refer to programming in the coding sense. However, Bellman used programming to signify planning and decision making. Dynamic was chosen to highlight the ever-changing nature of the problems. In any case, the key takeaways to understand here are optimal decision making and solving subproblems. Now that we know what dynamic programming is, how can we identify it? What characteristics are there to look out for? A problem is a dynamic programming problem if it satisfies two conditions. The first one being if the problem can be divided into subproblems and its optimal solution can be constructed from optimal solutions of the subproblems. This is called optimal substructure, which we just covered. As for the second condition, this is known as overlapping subproblems, which is exactly what it says if the subproblems overlap with each other. So let's take a closer look at the first concept, optimal substructure. I'm going to explain this with a relatively simple example. As you can see, we have a map. This is a route from San Francisco to San Diego. The goal here is to find the shortest path between these two cities. Now, Google has already calculated the shortest route for us to take, but how did we arrive at this solution? Basically, since the highway goes through Los Angeles, the problem can be divided into two subproblems. Driving from San Francisco to Los Angeles and driving from Los Angeles to San Diego. If we can find the shortest routes from San Francisco to Los Angeles and Los Angeles to San Diego, then we are guaranteed to find the overall shortest route from San Francisco to San Diego. This whole problem can be summarized with this function here. Essentially, a problem exhibits optimal substructure if the optimal solution to the overall problem can be constructed by efficiently combining the optimal solutions of its subproblems. As for the second characteristic, we have overlapping subproblems. As the name suggests, it's when problems overlap, obviously. But what is meant by this? The simplest example I can think of is to show you a visual of how recursion looks for the Fibonacci number problem. If you know anything about recursion, it's basically when a function calls itself over and over again until it hits a base case. Now, recursion is a topic that deserves its own video, but for this example, we will touch on it briefly. As you can see in this diagram, if you want to calculate the fifth Fibonacci number, Here's all the work we have to perform. If you look at the highlighted areas, this is all the repeat work we're performing. This isn't ideal, and dynamic programming will help us cut out all the repeat computations we're doing. Also, this is where overlapping subproblems pop up. If you look closely, you can see repeated function calls like fib2 and fib3 here. In simple terms, if a problem can be solved with recursion, then it will exhibit overlapping subproblems. If these two conditions are satisfied, then dynamic programming can solve the problem much more efficiently. So when dealing with a problem, first try and see if it can be solved recursively. To best determine this, try and see if divide and conquer will work for the given problem. See if breaking the problem down to the simplest subproblem can, eventually, build up to the optimal solution. If you can do this, then you will know if you can apply recursion, at which point you'll know for sure that this problem can be solved with dynamic programming. All right, so those are the two main characteristics that determine if a problem can be solved with dynamic programming. But before I end this video, I want to talk about a few patterns that you can look out for. Because if you look on LeetCode at various dynamic programming problems, you can actually spot patterns amongst them. In fact, I found five indicators to look out for. The first of which is sequential decision making. Many dynamic programming problems involve a sequence of decisions where each decision impacts future states. 
If the optimal solution at each step contributes to the overall optimal solution, then that suggests a dynamic programming problem. Some examples on LeetCode that exhibit sequential decision making are the problems House Robber and Decode Ways. The next dynamic programming indicator that you can look out for is the greedy choice property. If a problem exhibits a greedy choice property, where locally optimal choices lead to a globally optimal solution, those are also often solvable with DP. In other words, if you can solve a problem using a greedy algorithm, then you can also solve it using dynamic programming. Some examples of this are the jump game to and best time to buy and sell stock to. The next pattern that you can look out for is state transition. So when you're working on a problem, dynamic programming problems often involve transitioning from one state to the next, and the transition must depend on previous states. So if you can identify this trait in a problem that you're working on, then that's also a good indicator. Some examples of this are the climbing stairs and minimum path sum problems. The fourth indicator that you can look out for is when dealing with paths or arrays. So problems that are framed as finding the optimal path or arranging elements in an array or even reaching a particular state from another state often involve dynamic programming. Some good examples of this are the unique paths problem and the longest increasing subsequence problem. And then finally, we have our fifth indicator to look out for, which is counting or maximization slash minimization. So problems that require counting the number of ways to achieve a goal or maximizing or minimizing a value frequently involve dynamic programming. Essentially, look out for problems framed as counting or optimization tasks. Some notable examples on LeetCode are the coin change problem and the maximum subarray problem. So those are the five patterns or indicators that you can look out for whenever you're working on a problem to determine if you can apply dynamic programming to it. If you keep these indicators in mind when solving dynamic programming problems, I promise your intuition for these type of problems will start to develop. So that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to press that like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to stay tuned for part two, which will be covering the difference between bottoms up and top down in dynamic programming. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. All right, with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.